Yeah, we got a caller. 240 645, you on the line. What's good? Yo, what up? This is up, actually man? fame, man. I, w- I was a little confused on my time, so I was I was calling now, but I can okay. I'm a, I can call back later. But I just wanted to, you know, what I'm saying, get everything completely squared away because I'm tuned in until I am, until it is time for me to. Uh, to oh get man, to we ready to in. roll. We ready to roll, fam. Okay, well, I mean, I'm with it then. I'm I'm ready now, then. All right, let's get it, man. So fame, the acronym. What does it mean for the people that don't know? It stands for finally achieving my excellence. Okay. That's what's up. Now, when did you start your rap career? I think I started taking it seriously. I mean, I've been playing with it for years, but I think I started taking it serious maybe around 07, 08, like really, really, really knowing that I I, I had the ability to, to get somewhere with it. Um, you know, and in between that time, you know, you just got different things that just happens with life growing up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but I've been serious about it since about 07, 08, like where I I knew, I stamped myself like I'm confident enough to know that I can do this. No doubt, no question. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about the temperament of rap nowadays? Like, how do you feel about the game? I mean, the game is forever evolving. It's, it's always going to be, you know, different artists and different things going on. So, I mean... I'm okay with it to an extent because it's a, there are a lot of artists that I'm that I'm really a fan of, you know, of their music and they keep pushing the culture forward. Your Kendrick, your Coles, um, right. Drake, Wale, like you know, they all keeping the the youthful part of the culture pushing forward. And I, you know, and even even all the way to, and I'm like Jeezy, all of them. Like I just think that everybody, when it comes to the the game and the industry, like it's a lot of southern artists now, like Rich Homie and all of them. Like, they're all doing their thing, but, you know, for every genre and for every, you know, part of this thing that we're in, like, when it comes to the music, like, you know, it's something for everybody. So I'm okay with it, man, forever evolving, whether it's auto-tune or whatever. Like, somebody loves it and somebody's listening to it. That's why we're, that's why we hear it. No question. Uh, now, I see you got a lot of projects, like Fame. Now, the single, I was saying I'm feeling it. Now, do you deal with in-house producers, or do you deal with, you know, people sending you beats, or what do you prefer? I mean, honestly, I can't wait till I can get with that one producer that understands me and, and is willing to just create my, like, create, we we either cultivate a sound together, or, or he finds my sound and my niche, and we work together consistently, because I think that's how you find your, and define your sound and become this great artist, I feel like. You know, Ye did it for himself. Drake does it with 40. Like, you can work with other producers, but just to find that, you know, right. Big Sean, Key Wayne, just to, you know, just to have that consistent producer is how I prefer it. But right now, I don't have that. I don't have the luxury of having that. So I just try to, I'm very, you know, just beat hungry. So it's like I got a couple local cats, like my boy, Casito Del Fresco, that's from around this area. Like, you know, you got BKS that's from D.C. And then it's a lot of internet producers that are crazy so you just gotta keep your ears up and it's like i get producers that send me stuff just send me beats like so no it's question. really just like this big old pot of beats that you surf through and go through and out of every like 100 you might find one that you're just like yeah yeah this is crazy I yeah that's that good. one yeah now yeah. when you work on a project like say for instance mixtapes i'm gonna just ask, yeah. put this question out in the air do you feel that doing a mixtape is the difference between doing an album? Well, I think it's all on your mentality and how you approach it. I think at one point, when, like, Weezy and all of them was doing squads and stuff like that, like, I feel like they approached it like mixtapes. Like, you know, it's like, we just on here to have some fun, jack your beat, dog it, and, you know, and keep it moving. I think now um, the mentality is album even though it's a mixtape. You have to call it a mixtape because most of the time you don't own the samples, you know, you can't right. shop and sell it. So it's it's technically a mixtape unless it's all original production with no sample clearances and, you know, but when it comes to just like now, I think most people approach it like the game now, and that's almost like your resume. Like, all right, um, everybody's rapping. So my resume has to stand apart from this one. So I got to make this mixtape sound like an album. 
Right. When they hear it, they're going to be like, man, this sounds like an album. He's giving this away? Like, and I think that's like <laughs> a new industry standard. You know what I'm saying? Cause true. Like, you got to think about it. Like, artists now, they even the artists that's on, like, they're giving away their best music. Meek did it. You know, Cole did it with Friday Night Lights. Meek did it with Dream Chasers. Like, they're giving away some of their best music just to keep you tuned in. Like, just to let you know you got that. And so you got to think about how, how how much harder they have to work because they're giving you this, this mixtape that sounds better than the album almost. And it's like, that's because they right. worked as hard on that mixtape as they did on the album. And they worked so hard, they might have overworked themselves the way, you know, they may have gave away too much. And that's the gamble, just to keep you tuned in, to make you, you know, say, hey, yeah, I still exist, so stay tuned. I got an album coming soon, but, you know, listen to this for the next two months. And then, you know, so right. I think the game now is to just to, to approach it like an album, like you're making an album. Right. Now, when you compose a song, do you envision doing a video like going with it? Do you think it's important? I do now. Okay. You know, and, and I and I learned that from, from other peers that do music. Like the best thing to do and I and I'm still learning. So it's like the best thing to do when you're making a song, like originally I would just make it and it would be what sounds good to me and what I'd like, you know. And I hope that you can relate and then you'll like it too. And if not, then it's like oh well but now it's like you do want to think about, especially if it's a song that you can see a video, you want to envision stuff like uh, what type of video with this. But more importantly, you want to think about your live performance. Like when you're, when you're composing this song, you want to think about what the audience can take from it, how to, you know, call and respond. How they're going to perceive it. Right. Yeah, how they're going to perceive it, breathe in space, you know, because I get wordy sometimes. So that, ugh, that sucks when it's time to perform live. Man, right. Because you end up having to either chop it or you're like me, and you damn near kill yourself to get through it because you're just trying to get all the words out. But I've seen, like, Kendrick in them live, and on okay. some of his, you know, he's really wordy. So he's perfected right. a way to chop and, and change the song to where you still get the gist of it, but he right. damn sure takes breaks to get that air in. So um, I think that's just the skill. But I think when you're creating the music, just try to think about your audience, the live performances, you know, videos, just how people are going to be able to perceive it and how you can really make it the best that it can be just overall and not just the song itself. Right. Now, you know, being, are you independent or are you um, signed? Now, I'm currently with the independent label, uh, LTMG, okay. that's L Train Music Group. Um, you know, just, to, just they saw a vision in me. and they, they saw something with me, like, you know, just coming from this area, it's a lot of artists around here just trying to get on and uh you know he had been following my music he had actually been put in touch with my music and when he heard it he was just like he just wanted to you know get behind me and help me push like help me the the race to the maybe the majors you know just whatever right. let's just attack it and just just pretty much grow organically with the music and try to build a fan base and, and just you know I want to I want some longevity with it so I, I love to be that guy that can go sell out you know the small venue right. Even when there's no hit on the radio, because that's how you, right. that's how a lot of these artists still eat right now. Because they don't, everyone doesn't have hit, but they got that organic following. They love their music, so they just gonna always come out to the shows. And and I think that's very important. That's that's definitely the lane I'm trying to stay in and, and like continue to build. Like I want some solid fans that just like the music, regardless if it's a hit or if it's just because they just love the music that I put on that tape. Right now, I see you got some accolades. You know, you was in a 2012 DMV, Cap City Cipher. Yeah. And um, yeah. also, you won the Ring Veins 368 Music Group. Yes. Could you elaborate on that? So, um, okay, so I know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Raheem Devon, who's also from um, DMV. Oh, my bad. I said his name wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raheem yeah, Devon, who, okay. you know, Grammy nominated. I'm not sure if he won. He may have, but, you know, makes dope music, like a like a modern day Marvin, like definitely right. a talented dude. And uh, he has a label uh, ran, co-ran with uh, Dre the mayor, this Dre from around here as well. And um, okay. they have a few artists, Chance French, uh, Till Our Day, um, you know, they and their label was 368 Music Group. And they had a competition a couple years ago called DMV Diamond in the Rough. And it was about 18 acts, uh, MCs, groups, you know, um, and you just pretty much, it was a couple MCs I was cool with. They just give you one shot to go up there and do your do bring your best song forward, and you know they they got a panel of judges and they got a crowd, 
And uh, right. out of the eighteen that was up there, some talented people. I guess they thought I had the best. I had the best thing to say that night, and uh, you know, and I won amongst those people. Man, it's always a great feeling because you know DJ Money. It was some. It was some 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 heavy hitters in there from our area, and I think that right. that's how you get on radar sometimes. And that was my sole yes, purpose. Sir. I promise you, when I went in there, it wasn't to win. And I know people say, are you supposed to always want to win? It wasn't right. about that. At this point, I was frustrated because I felt like I had the same ability as a lot of these other dudes who, who were getting noticed. Like, I'm from here. So, you know, while right. they, everybody's getting their recognition, which is just due because they're hardworking. And, you know, they make good music in my Correct. opinion. So, but to know you make music just as just as good or, you know, you're consistently getting better, but no one can hear it, it's yeah, frustrating nobody, as an artist. Yeah, yeah it can so, get frustrating. My sole purpose was to get there. I knew certain people was on that judging panel, and I just wanted them to know who I was when I left. That was my whole reason. I didn't didn't matter what whether I placed, didn't place, or anything. I just wanted to win. That was it. I mean, right. I just well, not win. I just wanted to win their attention. So you know, it was like some. I went in there, went to the bathroom, said a quick prayer, went up there, and it just worked in my favor because I didn't pick a song that everybody like. You know, people conform so fast so they think man people gonna want to turn up it's people in there that's like i don't mind turn up music and i can make a turn up song and i've made one but it's like right. a couple like this, this it's not really my thing per se to where that's what i always want to do so it, what i said to myself was why should i go in here and try to pick one of these somewhat of a turn up song that i have when it's somebody where that's all they want to make so they're going to show up, and they're going to be – they may not be a better artist than me, but they may make better turn-up music than me. And I'm trying to jump in their lane thinking this is what the people going to want to hear, and they're right. going to dog me because this is what they specialize in. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do something lane. different. Yeah, and it's actually – it ended up being a song. It ended up being the song after my intro on my Too Busy Dreaming tape, The First Step is what I performed that night. Okay. And um, I performed it live on stage, and if you listen to the lyrics on there – it literally sounds like I'm talking directly to somebody. So right. it looked like I was talking to every artist that was in there that night. And that's why it, it had the reaction it had, because it was like everybody was in there doing everything that they wanted to hear, like, yo, and all that. Turn it up. Right. And it was just like, I just came in like, you know, first step, say to be the hardest. The last move usually started the smartest. Of yeah. the man in his eyes to see where his heart is, only to find out most of these niggas are heartless. Like huh. you know what I'm saying, and I, and it was just like that. And it was slow build up, so it was right. like the tempo was beat. It had a, it was go go infused in the beat because BKS made it, and it was like you okay. know, and it was just like it grabbed their attention. And I was real stern in my delivery, so it was it was at that point I was out for blood. At that point when I was in, right. it was like okay, I'm now, here now. Let me ask you this question. Now you know everybody, especially when it comes to rap, you know everybody got a story to tell. Do you think? Is oversaturated with people, you know, like they got to use a gimmick in the game. What's your opinion on it? I think everybody's looking for that instant gratification. So they like, ah, Real what can talk. I do to make them notice me right now? Like, not the grind, not the nah. They like, you know, forget all that. I don't want the grind. I don't need all that. I need you to. I need to hit the radio. I need this money now. What I got to yes, do? Sir. So I, I agree with really, you fully. <laughs> Go and I said sole purpose is like, man, I gotta make. I gotta get on. Yeah, yeah, I I gotta get on. Yeah, but right. Yeah, it's a double edged sword, man. It's a gift and a curse to that because that gimmick, that gimmick, you gonna be, you gonna be dancing across that stage until it's over. You know, it's over. Like that's it. Like when you when you're consistently making great music, that's gonna that's gonna withstand the test of time. Like. Right. All of that, you know, not to ever slight anything from, you know, because a lot, a lot of Southern acts do it. And I, I'm a, I'm with it because it's, it's great music to party to. But I think I think they even know that that type of sound, they have to continue to evolve it. And it's harder to stay right. around opposed to your just consistent artists who are always relevant because they just make quality music. And I think that the gimmicks are, you know, it's that that's truly your 15 seconds. Like, and hopefully you can capitalize off of it. And they're probably always going to have a following in their hometown or where they blew up at. So, right. you know, you never know what these cats are doing when they're not in front of the camera no more. They may still have some shows here and there. But I think, like, you know, the, the newest sensation, Bobby Schmurter, and I'm a fan of the song. Right. Because, you know, it makes me want to dance. And I'm not even, I would right. dance a lot. But when it comes yeah, on. Yeah, the because, beat was crazy, too. Yeah, what he did was, 
what he did was a perfect marriage, which is hard to do. Now, right. this dude had the beat. He had the voice and lyrics to, like, the, the, go the with flow it. that goes with the beat. Right. And then he had a dance. It was all yeah, three. So it was and it a wasn't full package. Exactly. And that's and that's like that's old elements of hip hop. That does not even that's just by me just saying when I go back and look at old hip hop, that's how it used to be. Like it was always right. it was dancing, it was, about it was the rapping. Lyrics. Yeah, exactly. and the lyrics. It wasn't and drama the, and all that. Now speaking of that, like far as lyricism, you know, I feel like, you know, it's really diluted nowadays. Do you want to perpetuate a lot of lyricism in your music or it depends on the beat or what you're feeling. Now, I'm I I've been considered a lyricist because I I can get wordy. Yeah, I, I can do. hear it. Like I, yeah, I definitely like to get my point across in a in a unique way. I I try to avoid giving it to you the same way you heard it before. But right. you know, I think it's an evolving thing, and I I'm finding new ways in my new project, Pieces of a King. Like it's a little bit more aggression on it. And I'm finding okay. new ways to to deliver my message. So, um, I think that it's it's whatever the people are going to receive. I think a lot of people have you know dumbed it down. And the, the saddest part is, and, and yes, I was sir. just I was just actually on another radio show out here, Lush Radio, and okay. we were talking about how, um, you know, it's it's the sadly to say that the you know the African American community, man, like we, it's a right. lot of uneducated people and they really they really you know they gravitate to the dumbed down music because it's what they understand real like talk. Say, we were just saying it can't even it don't even have to be a real major big word it can just be like somebody just says esophagus and it's like oh this dude is common sense oh my gosh what is he yeah. about? like now how you, know you feel like? about that though fam because i mean you know I, I feel like people are stupid for saying that because you know being a listener I mean, you want to be intrigued. I remember a time where, you know, I listen to a lot of volume of music. You know, we on seven days a week. Okay. So, you know, I feel like we all share the same struggle, if you know what I mean. So yeah. people used to talk through the music and drop knowledge, drop Jews, or whatever you going through so somebody could relate. You know, like one of them songs, like, damn, man, I went through that. You know what I mean? He solved my problem. Yeah. You may not have even met that dude, but that's how we used to do it. But, like, I'm touching on what you were saying. Like now, it's like people look at you like you're stupid because you're talking intellectual, and that's kind of crazy. Like it's, it is crazy. They look at you like, ah, this dude's corny, and I'm like, let me tell you something. I don't got a corny bone in me. I'm Real just talk. not stupid. Oh, uh, like I don't even know. I I don't know what else to say to you. Like, bruh, I'm I'm not stupid. Like, what do you want me right. to do? Okay, so let me. Let me just find the dumbest words that I can use right now and put them in a, a sentence for you and make it sound good. Like, nah, mm-hmm. like it's a it's a level. And and I will say this: nobody wants to decipher your whole song. It's a lane of people that they love doing that. Like I'm a Lupe fan, and I'll be in there dissecting right. and still don't get everything. But I know enough to know <laughs> that this dude is giving me he something. You know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so. And this is his way of delivery, and I, but you know that's me. Like that intrigues me. I like lyricism. So, what? um, I also think yeah. that you do when it comes to certain songs or certain things. I think when you become more personal with the people, you do want to kind of not dumb it down, but you just just be just be organic with it. Just be natural with yeah, it. Whatever man, natural, natural music, man. Yeah, that's it. As long as you're natural and real with the music, I think it'll it'll sound that way. I think right. when you try to force a sound, it's like ah, you're trying to sound like this. Like you, that forced sound is never a good look to me. So I think with me, my new project, I'm I get a little bit more personal. Some of the flows have slowed down a little bit, so you can catch it. I I might let the beat live a little bit more instead of rapping right. on every you know. So it's just things that I'm learning and doing as I grow, you know, as an artist. And also, like I said, when I do them live shows, a whole yeah. set of rah, 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 yeah, I'd be ready to pass out no matter how yeah, many you trades can. you're Your breath control, like, yeah, man. Like, yeah, you just, can't be smoking and all that. You, <laughs> you can't do nothing. You up there like, it's been times I was chasing my life to get the last right. word out. Like, I, I, and, and my boy would be like, dude, you're killing yourself. You really got to yeah, you really let that what? beat breathe. But people respect that because, you know, I've been to performances, and, you know, sometimes they be lackluster. Even though the flow is there, but the people, you know, they want to see you work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know it's what I'm saying? Show. Especially, you know, the delivery and stuff like that. But you know what? We're going to blast off on one of your tracks. 
We rocking out live with Fame, Washington Own. This is Too Busy Dreaming. That's off that Too Busy Dream. Well, actually, that's the name of the song, Too Busy Dreaming. Want it all. Let's get it, man. Yeah. Dream. I seen a window the other day, said I dive through it. Opportunity in the air, I'ma fly through it. Tie my laces up, tired of tripping over my own feet. Women start tripping when they wanna be your only. Can you tell them that you ain't got the time? You've been looking for your dreams, it's finally time to find them. I can't be one of them niggas, let that pussy blind him. Type of man where only your woman can define him. Vanilla sky on a dark night. Tom Cruise in that black thing, feeling like the dark night. Pull up on the curb like I can fucking park right. Banging that opportunity door like I can't knock right. A bright future with a dark sight. Put that red on that black, guarantee it's going to spot right. Trying to jumpstart a dying dream, it's hard to trust anything around me when nothing is what it seems. Wake up, do what I really want in life. That's my dream. That's all I really want in life. Living out my dreams or dying in a nightmare. If that's my only option, then just leaves me with a blank stick. A broke nigga with a rich mentality. Trying to broker myself to a rich man's salary. Back against the wall, I feel the door and I just walk through it. You got a problem, look it in the eye and talk to it. These niggas, they ain't never really seen problems. I went to sleep, woke up, man, I dream problems. I want it all. I guess that really means problems. With better means, strategies for me to solve them. Till I can wake up and fly to any place I want. Then I ain't in the place I want. I guess perception is the inception inside my dreams. Inside that safe, you gon' find everything I want. Cause my ancestors the same color as asphalt They tell me everything I want I'll probably never get So when I get it I'll make sure that they never forget Ethic event, promotion, pictures Black mirrors painted on hell walls and pictures I want it all for everyone who ain't with us They fall for everything the same one give us They invented the hustle I'm an innovator, I overgrind Play it to the very end, overtime If she get my love, you know I put nothing over mine I would give her everything like not doing it with crime Sweet dreams, wake up to beautiful I witnessed in my life, I'm even quite dead. Big God, just everything else could bleed red. I'm in a position to win. Fuck what he said. I want it all. Money, cars, clothes. And my best trigger voice, that's how the story goes. They tell me if you speak it, you can get it. So let me tell these people what I want and hope they don't forget it. Like, you know, being self-contained, 
You know, because I hear a lot of artists say, you know, the independent route is crazy, and you know, how you feel about that? I mean, it's definitely hard work, and I mean, I think it's it's really what you put into it. A lot of times when you when you're in an independent route, you know, unless you have some major backing, you are still living this everyday life, like trying to make your money, whether it's a nine to five, a six to nine, a side hustle, uh, right. you know, anything. So you're still living this everyday man's life. Why are you trying to do this independent thing? So things getting away. You got to you got to step back for a month or two. You done had a setback. You know, all no kind doubt. The girl stressing you something. It's still regular. You know, regular life that, you living. Yeah, and, but branding yourself, I think, is important, and I think that's a lot of things. That's something that every independent artist has to learn to, to focus in on. Even myself, like branding, because they they have to remember you. So you have to give them something to remember you and market yourself in that way. So I think right. with me. Um, you know, I think a start, and it wasn't even done on purpose, but everything you see with me, like my name is Fame, so everybody, right. you hear Fame everywhere now. When I first said, when I first came up with the name, everybody wasn't doing it. Like, I thought about the name years ago, and it was like before the song titles, before the and first Brown that, album. Right. Now everybody has it. So you Google Fame, you're going to find everything. So me, when you Google me or you go to my, my, my social uh, media that was smart. hits, Fame is hip-hop on everything. Everything that you could think of is famous right. from dot com all the way through every social media, um, you know, the band camps, the reverbs, IG, Twitter, it's fame, is right. hip hop, all one. And it's like you at that or you Google that, that's going to get me like, because that's that's how you get directly to me. Because if I just like, yeah, man, I'm fame. And you go there, you're going to be watching the right. movie. You know, yeah, you, yeah. Everybody got to know where your direction is at, and I think exactly. a lot of artists don't do that or they don't take the time. They think you're gonna go look, but I mean, people want direct things. Now, when you put out a mixtape, Max, in your opinion, how do you feel about working a mixtape? You know how like people put out a big volume of music as artists. Yeah. But do you feel like a is it good for the business dropping five mixtapes or working at one project? Now, I think you should put some space in between the project and let it breathe a little bit because what I've okay. learned is that people don't know. You know, you're pushing <laughs> it. You're pushing it, but they don't even, like, they don't know. So, okay, you got your core followers, your, your right. friends, your family. This is your core followers when you start off. Then you got your neighborhood, your block. Then you right. got, you know, your school, the, the people who are this into the, the culture. And so it's like it, it, it expands, and then it goes into the the unknown, the right. word of mouth. So it takes a while to go that way sometimes. Like your your friend, your man might tell one person, and he might tell one person, and now it's three people outside of your your network that yeah. know about you. And then right. and that's that's in the third month. Like so, I think you let it breathe. You push it and push it as much as you can until you feel exhausted with it. Like you you just try to. And things can get old, but it's hard to get old if no one ever heard it. So if the Real music talk. gets dated, you got to keep pushing. And I think, you know, I felt that way. I felt like, man, I got to make a new, I got to put some new music out because, you know, but then it was people hitting me up a year later listening to songs on Too Busy Dreaming or watching the video for the first time. And they're like, dog, this is crazy, man. Like, right. this shit is crazy. Like, and I'm like, dude, I dropped this in December 2012. Like, exactly. And they but just don't know. That's making that timeless music, and I feel like yeah. a lot of artists don't try to do that. Like we was talking about earlier, man, they be fresh out the gate, just want something to blow. But I respect the artists that you know they have a little lineage behind them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, let that I mean, music I, rock. I think at the end of it all, like just it, period, just I want to make music that that just withstands the test of time, or they can touch somebody, or like pick somebody, right. can just build with it. Like you know what I'm saying? Just no matter when I drop a project, like, I just want some jewels to be on there. I want something that the listener now might not get it, but he might somehow stumble across that record in three years and be like, damn, like, damn. my friend was on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it went like, under the radar. Of, yeah, it's a lot of artists I ain't understand when I was a young and like I'm like I don't know. Like, right. but I was a fan, but I still didn't get the music. I, I didn't right. understand. I didn't know how to break. I listened, break it down. you know, as a young and listen to Reasonable Doubt. I was a fan. But right. I didn't know what the hell Jay was talking about. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't out there. I was going to goddamn school. I wasn't on nobody's right. block. But shit, you turn that joint on, and I'm like, you feeling yeah. that I put it in my headphone, I'm on my bike, and I feel like I'm in a Lexus. Like, it right. was just, I feel, 
I'm I'm hustling, running across the street or running to school. I feel like I got some some stuff in my backpack. Like that's it was just the way he made you feel when you listening to it. So right. but I didn't get it. I didn't get everything he was talking about. Now when I listen to it, I'm like, oh my gosh, like God, yeah, man. Man. like this is why it's, this is why it's what it is. This now Real I know cool. why it's a classic. You know, yep. people jump on a bandwagon. It's a classic. Do you understand why, though? Like, do you understand right. what age he was when he gave you this? And, what, you know, Nas with Illmatic, how young he was when he, when he painted those pictures for you. This right. still vivid today. Now, what artists have you collaborated with? Also, what artists that, you know, you grew up listening to that you, you know, you, you like or respected their music and their craft? Artists that I've collabed with, I haven't collabed with any majors. Like, I've collabed with some local artists like G2, okay. uh, Anik Khan, who's formerly known as K-Prime, right. um, my boy Scala, um, Hoffa, like, just local, just a lot of local talent. Like, my boy okay. Boston G, G, like, just Ray Jack, like, a bunch of local, like, it's so many artists in right. the D.C. area that's good. Like, yeah, listen. Really good. It, now nobody know who they are. Right now, coming from well, we know who you are. You know what I mean. So I feel yeah. like a lot of people, especially artists, it could be any genre of music. But I mean, you know, I feel like if you got the talent, you know, there's a lot of labels going on out here, man. I look at it, it could be an artist that just came out with talent. It could be somebody that been in the game for a minute. But to me, yeah. it's an even playing field now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the infrastructure, the record, the record labels deteriorated. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, look now, and, and another question I want to ask you, like, how do you feel about older artists, right? You know, a lot of artists, a lot of people hit me and be like, well, you know, they won't let them come in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, the older artists don't want to fade away. How do you feel about that? First of all, Music ain't going to die inside of you until it's gone. And I think that you got to let older artists live just as the middle artists and just as the young artists because every older artist was a younger artist and every younger artist is going to be an older artist. And you can't tell that young artist that in 15, 20 years, if he still desires to make music, you can't right. make music no more. You know, but you, you tend to not understand that when you're younger. you like, man, let us have our time to shine. Let us, nigga, take mm-hmm. your time. Take your time to shine. Real Stop talk. Stop bitching. Stop crying. Can I curse? Yeah, you can curse. Okay, okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure. This is irritating. <laughs> it's like somebody, yeah, let yeah. me give me a Like, nigga, make the song that make the older people say, God damn, make the song that the older people are irrelevant. They don't matter because the people right. love your music. So how many older artists, dog Drake saying, he makes soft music, I ain't with this shit. He right. makes this, 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 this. But guess True. what? Drake makes so many consistent hits and, and songs that's undeniable to his fans. It yeah, doesn't true. matter what you think about him. He's, he broke, he busted down the door in the lane and he's dissing Jay-Z. And they yeah. do different types of people. Like, at one point, people wouldn't even attempt to throw something at Jay-Z. That's like or watching 300 dog. and shooting that shooting that one spear up at the dude's ear. And you like, oh, my, everybody looking know, at you like, are you crazy? Yo, what's, cra- what's crazy about that is, that's real what you said. Because, I mean, for somebody to throw darts at you and saying uh, his caliber, you know what I mean, that what he did in the game, Jay-Z, I mean, you know, he had the respect respect them on some level to even yeah. respond. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, exactly. I mean, hey, that's how hip hop is. It is, and the thing is is that Drake's a very smart artist because he already been stamped by Jay-Z. He's already right. been certified by Jay-Z. He's already been blessed by Jay-Z. He put the hand on him. Yeah, you running, you the next, you running this. So now, right. when, it's, when it's beef or when it's whatever you want to call it, it's, it's you know, rap beef. It's like, because we know if it was real beef, it's a whole nother thing. If it's it rap a whole beef lane, or right. wax, it's like, okay, you've already stamped me. So now anything you say about me is like, oh, now you want to talk about me, but you, you was jiving on my dick three years ago, but I ain't going to say nothing. But it's on both ends, because him with Jay, too. He, so it's just, it's just when you be you reach another level of, of music where you're making this great music, that's competitive, and it's going to come out. So it's like, Drake, like, I'm the man right now, and, and I'm going to go as hard as I want. And Jay did right. it. Jay got into it with Nas, the best clash. Wayne and Jay, the best clash. This is how it goes. Like, 
it's it's a competitive sport, so it, ego right. is gonna come into play outside Let the bars influences. Talk. Yeah, man, let the bars talk. That's how I feel. Exactly, exactly. Real talk. And I, I'm a fan of it. So I, I mean, you know, when it's all said and done, as long as nobody shed no blood, it's cool. Like, all right, yeah, man. Back, keep it moving. That's what they need to do, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, all this stupidness. I mean, the streets is the streets, man. We all come from that elevate element. I mean, but you know, in actuality. What, what that got to do with music? I mean, it is interfused with it somewhat, but, I mean, let let the bars speak. Yeah, just keep it there. Like, when you take it to the streets, then it's going to turn into that. Like, but you got to, it's a certain way you do that. You know, you got to go for that, like, yeah, you out here really talking that stuff and pee and then get back. Like, that's different. Or you out here threatening or making, if you just on the bars and you like, yeah, I seen you here, and, you know, you still ain't doing, like, it's just bars. That's it. You go right. back in the studio and say something else. Like, keep it on wax. But, you know, the culture is different now, so. Sometimes right. it spills outside of it, and then sometimes you know it stays in. And I, I, ne- I knew the Jay and, and Drake thing was gonna stay on wax. Like I mean, it's just music. What are they really gonna do at this point? Right now, you did a lot of live shows, right? So not enough. I've done, I've done a lot, okay. but not enough. Like I'm always looking for more. All right. The question I want to ask you is, you know, far as rap, you know, they always giving it a bad name. You know, some incident happened. Do you think rap gets a bad name? I think it does. I think hip hop, rap, I think so the whole too. culture gets a bad name because, unfortunately, when you think about the hip hop culture, you think about the black youth or just black knucklehead ass kids right. or whatever. This is, but that's not what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's not what it is at all. I agree with you so, fully. It's like, it's what do you do? Like, yeah, it's like so. They, you're already painted this stereotype, so it's like this is what they think. But actually, it's a lot of like, hip hop has has made so many opportunities. The rap yes, culture has made us so many too. opportunities. We wouldn't be here on this radio show right now if it wasn't for the culture. I wouldn't it's be real. on this radio to t- talk about for you to even care what I gotta say right now if it wasn't for the culture. And That's if this real. wasn't happening, we both can be beating our block up right now to figure <laughs> yeah. something else out. You know what I'm saying? That's so, real. Yep. And that's and that's True. all the way right. up the ladder. All these stars, all this, all the people to give back. You got Diddy, you got Dre from Compton, making a right. billion dollars off Beats headphones because you believed them as a producer, and now you believed them so much that you're willing to buy and sell some headphones just because he proved himself as as a musician. So that's now real. you trust them. You know what I'm saying? This is all from, and it, that's just the beginning. The endorsements is. Everything across how many kids that help, scholarships, everything, just yep. because somebody put a pen down or just because somebody picked up an NPC or just because somebody and picked up a mic powerful, and interviewed more powerful than the sword, man. Exactly. A lot of people don't understand. Voice. And, now, and, you know. Let me ask you. Now, now, this question right here, like, you know, especially with, um, you know, artists, on the radio, especially radio personalities. How do you feel about race, radio personalities? You don't have to say no names, but do you think they too much in the limelight now? Like everybody want to be, quote unquote, in the limelight instead of playing a position and letting the music, you know, like breaking a record. How you feel about that? Honestly, feel like when it comes to radio personalities, that everybody's trying to brand themselves to an extent. I okay. think people are thinking about their future so you do see a lot of them be trying to be more like up front but it's kind of like it's a, the radio industry is dirty too like it's a it's a it's a game well. i've seen <laughs> i've seen radio personalities that i thought were crazy and they just wiped off the radio one day like you just right. turn it and it's blank and i'm like whoa what the hell is happening yeah, like real been listening to this station for you know i didn't yeah. see them get shut down so i think everybody's kind of looking out for themselves because if this your dream and if you ain't go to school and become a scholar to be this, this and this and this is what your this is this is what you know, like what are you gonna do after this? Like you can do some other things, but I think that fear kicks in. So you're trying to put yourself out here and brand yourself as much as you can. And the day that they say no more, you've made yourself so relevant that you can just jump on to something else or you know, right. and I think everybody just kinda of looking out for themselves these days, like, wow, while That's looking true. out, you know, and I and I think it's important. It's it's like 
because you want to support and you want to put on, but at the same time, self-preservation is important. So you got to look out for self, and I think a lot of people forget about that. And they, they may help a million people, and then, man, not one of the million that they help reach their hand back for you, and then you just there. Just, yeah, that's you know the saying? truth. So, that's definitely that's the life. truth. Now, Crazy. When, when it comes to Washington, D.C., like the music, I know, you know, you got different genres of music. Could you elaborate on that? Um. You mean like as far as in the go go no. Yeah, the go go and yeah, like stuff like that. Um, it's the go go culture in DC is like, what can it be equivalent to? Like, it's legendary around here. Like, you got okay from, you know, Godfather. So, like, you got it. You got Chuck Chuck Brown who. Passed away recently. They named yeah, the rest street. in peace to they him. Named, Great you know what I'm saying? They named the street after this guy after he passed, like by the Howard Theater. It's it's a way. Right, let me say it's a way. Like it's one little block, but that's how powerful Go Go is around here. Like you know, right. so in that and and the thing is, it's like that's how that's how culture like music around okay. here. So a lot of people, a lot of artists, and while they got on infusing that into his music, right. you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't. He didn't create that sound. Like, that okay. sound came from just regular hood niggas out that produce. You know, right. you got Hit or Quitter in them, and Southeast Slim mm-hmm. and all of them dudes. Like, they were making this sound, but, you know, Wale was that forefront around. He was that artist around here at that time, bubbling, and he right. jumped on there, and he did it justice. Like, you know, that's right. like that perfect marriage where you get the right beat and get it with the right artist. Artist, yeah. Yeah, it's, another artist could have jumped on that go-go beat, and nobody could have paid it any attention, but Wale right. did it justice. So... And and that's where it starts. Like Go Go is so embedded around here. Like it, you're gonna win in this DC metropolitan area if you can make a great track that embodies that Go Go sound because they love it already. So you already right. want, you take that dig dug and and it's already a uh, that's already popular. Like they already thinking of their favorite band and then you want it. So you can kind of grasp their attention with that music. And I think so. And hip hop is becoming bigger in DC this D.C., Maryland, Virginia area now. Like, Go-Go right. was that forefront. That's all we really had, Go-Go and R&B. Because, you know, we got Marvin. We got, you know, we, we go back. Way back, but, right. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like we still had, it was always R&B, and then we had, like, nonchalant and stuff like that back in the day. This is just me studying the history of it. But at the same time, rap wasn't really a big deal in D.C. ever. Like, you know, D.C. wasn't right. known for rap. It was known for Go-Go. That's what you really knew it for. Go go or the the or the comedians or you right. know, it wasn't rap now. Like whether people want to give them credit or not, Wale was one of the people that made you pay attention to D C like in the new age. To where and then you got Fat Trill and then you got Glizzy and you got all these other artists just popping off or just getting this recognition. But, you know, so and I think people are finally starting to realize that it's talent. That's why I would never hate any of these dudes that are getting on because all they do is make everybody else pay closer attention, just like they did in Atlanta. Like, right. everybody popping off. Now you like, damn, Atlanta got this That's going real. on. That's yeah, real. That's so real. Why that. hate that? Why hate that when they bring, they bringing a the light to you? They they funneling it in. You ain't had no voice. And now they bringing the people to you closer. They get they hated on. First you were screaming down the damn hallway. Now they right across the hall. So real you talk. can really get noticed now. Now you can put your hand up and they might grab you with that little claw because they can see you now. So... I mean, I'm, I shout out all them dudes. We make different types of music, but th- the fact is they worked hard and they got to them levels, and I'm I'm with it. Like, keep bringing the attention this way because I'm trying to get them to notice me too. So Exactly. Now, I think it's a great thing. You know, I'm from New York, Queens, and I feel like, you know, I respect everybody, you know what I mean, from hood to yeah. hood. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, with the controversy, y'all I'm from here and from there, you know what I'm saying, you got to respect your people lane, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I feel like that's what's messing up the game, too, with a lot of artists. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you have a quote-unquote fellow, whatever, man. Look, it's talent everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So I exactly. think a lot of people have tunnel vision when it comes to certain artists. Like, oh, I ain't going to try to go to D.C. Nah, man, yo, it's talent everywhere, man. I respect that, man. And we're going to get into this next track, you know what I mean? So let's get it. This track right here is Fame, Too Busy Dreaming. Let me see. The Glory featuring Scola, produced by Johnny Giuliano. 
Let's get it, man. Shut them down radio. We blasting off. Yeah. Yeah. These are the nights that you remember forever. These are the feelings you want to last forever. Share them with your niggas that you can laugh with and cry together. Raise your glass, get fly, live your life and then fly together. These are the times the sure they live for. If she die for you, then give her everything to live for. These are the times that I prepared for. Late night, early mornings, also I can stay on course. To turn my dreams into reality. Ah, uh, yeah. I say of course. To turn my dreams into reality. I say of course. Hey, I won't do this for the glory. Cause everybody got a story. Celebrating early, that shot I took ain't supposed to miss Fourth quarter, I promise I'm on some Kobe shit Shy brothers grab that girl, approach her quick Let her know she's everything you want and more Her eyes telling the story and her body telling a million more Open the door, sometimes opportunity comes for once around Don't let that be the day that you decide to gun it down The thought of her in that moment, I all go run around Inside your head until the sun is down The sweet taste, the victory Law of the mystery, make your tomorrow today to your yesterday's a history. Hey, I won't do this for the glory, yeah, cause everybody got a story. Yeah, yeah. Till my building is 20 stories. Yeah, yeah. I'ma tell my story. Yeah, I won't do this for the glory. Yeah, cause everybody got a story. Yeah, yeah. Till my building's a hundred stories. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I'ma tell my story. They used to just feel like forever, 21 girls and forever 21, all getting in together, thinking, man, I need my shit together. Bitches be so quick to doubt a nigga. These bitches be so quick to down a nigga. Then you come back in that bubble when they all looking lost, wishing they had found a nigga. Use every little situation as your motivation. Give me your motive and I see the life before they take it, and they don't give you shit. Either you making or they taking or you winning or you losing. Make a date with success. Tell that bitch you choose. Hey, I won't do this for the glory. Yeah, Cause everybody got a story. Yeah, yeah. Till my building is 20 stories. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I'ma tell my story. Yeah, yeah. Cause everybody got a story. Yeah, yeah. Till my building is 20 stories. That was he right there, man. We rocking out with Saint BCO. Definitely bars, man. Fame, you on the line? I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah, that definitely that was hot right there, bro. I appreciate that, man. Real talk. Now, your next project, when is it gonna drop? Just waiting on the perfect time. There's no such thing as the perfect time. Let me take that back. All right. I'm just waiting <laughs> on the time where it feels right. Just trying to work with my PR team, Trey Day, based out in LA and you know, and work with L T M G just just really trying to get the music up to par. Like I have a single that's ready and it's called King Shit. And um okay. I'm proud of it. It's it's a very good song in my opinion, and I, I feel like I'm definitely addressing a, a, a lot of things, and it's a lot more aggressive than anything that's on that project where these two songs that you just played today come from where right. you're too busy dreaming. It's a lot more aggressive. And like you from NY, so you already know that a lot of a lot of cats get recognition by being a little bit more aggressive. You got to kind of get in their face a little bit. To be right. like, yo, you know, because they quick to be like, oh, this dude, man, he's soft, or he be talking about this, I ain't trying to hear that. So sometimes you got to kind of, like, let them know, like, nah, it's not that sweet. Like, you know, so Real talk. This, this project this project gives a little bit more of that aggression. Uh, but I'm still, you know, sticking to me, which is just being forward and just pushing the culture forward the same way that I have been. 
um, in my opinion. But just, you know, just sticking to reality in my life and the things around me and the things that I perceive and, you know, that I deal with on a daily. So, you know, merged in with flow switching, crazy, just, you know, beat changes and more, you know, just I focus more on production this go around. Like I wanted the production right. to win you over just as much as, as my lyrics do. I want you to love the song for the production before you even hear me say anything. So um, I'm, I'm kind of taking my time. Like it's it's definitely be, be ending the finishing parts, but you never really know because I'm just making music. I'm just making music, and then when it's time to make it, to put it out, you know, we're going to do that. We're going to focus on the single first, and we're going to focus on some visuals, and then when it feels right to drop that project, we're going to let the world have it. That's what I'm talking about, my G. I think you're well on your way, you know, from what I heard. And, you know, I peeped the videos, definitely well on your way. Appreciate that, man. Let me ask you a question. Now, are you going to spawn into acting? You know, like usually a lot of people, you know, when they get in the rap industry, they usually spawn off the acting or anything like that. Will you try any of them avenues? I mean, I'm I'm not shut down to do any of that because, you know, rap, unfortunately, everybody can't stick in it forever. Like, you definitely want to branch off and be able to take your brand different places and build and just, right. you know, and invest in different things because, you know, the music industry is real fickle. Everybody can't be Jay-Z. You, Jay-Z real might be cool. rapping until he's 60. No, you know, everybody can't do that, you know, and be right. at his level, not just do it. You can do it. You still got brothers that's well over 40 that can go to certain venues and, and, and sell a decent crowd and, you know, and perform their old hits. But Jay is still up there. He's still here. He's still relevant. So real talk. Um, at the end of the day, and, and, and look at him. He's the, he does everything else and still relevant. So that he's letting you know that you got to take it outside of rap. Like, it, it's, it's definitely so – I mean, I think with me and acting, it definitely would take some practice, maybe a couple classes or somebody to coach me a little bit. Because if you watch my Glory video, I do eh, a little teeny bit of acting. It right. wasn't the greatest acting, but it it wasn't the greatest acting. <laughs> it, it, it was decent cool. for what it was, but it, when I looked at it, I'd be yeah. like, ah. You know, but you know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to be real with myself. I'm going to sit up here and act yeah. like I'm, you know, I'm not. Denzel, but no, nah, I'm definitely open for it, man. Like I'm open for any of those other avenues of where I can try to put my feet in. If it's open, if the door's open for it, I definitely would try it before I denied it. Real talk. And shout out to the listeners, man. I see you out there. If you want to talk, press one. We rocking out with fame. DC on. Press one to talk. Now, we got a segment of the show. High 16, man. You got something for the people live? There's a lot of people listening, streaming live. You got something for the people? I think I always got something in the in the, in the the cut that the people um, get the people, whether it's a 16, a 24, like eight. Yeah, man. Eight, like just, just, something to, just something to give them. I think I got something for them. All right, whenever you ready, fam. All right. And this is just straight acapella. Yeah, straight acapella. Oh, okay. you want a beat or something? Or? No, 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 no. All right. You, I feel like freeway. Put a beat on. Like, no, no. I'm just, I just <laughs> want to, <make, laughs> I just want to make sure. You know what I'm saying? That, that what, uh, it right. was, what it was like. You know what I'm saying? That's it. <clears throat> okay. Um. Sneakers laced in my '88. My whole shit say '88. Pulled up with those paper plates, my own niggas couldn't hide the hate. Applied the mask, subtract the snakes. Applied the gas, subtract the brakes. Sound like a nigga with a lot to say. Make a whole lot tomorrow, make a lot today. This ain't plain clothes, this play clothes. Got a bad bitch shopping on ASOS. Uh. man, yo, eat pesos. A street bumping at pesos. That case full of money, that case closed. Got a red eye flight with a case of clothes. Bitch ass niggas always opposed, and I don't really trust none of these hoes eating an entree in my entree. DC treat me like an outcast. Andre, uh, tango ombre, big boy in my enclave, and I ain't talking no whip, nigga. Talking about the federal district, nigga. D dot C dot D I E for your Adidas, ah. and I'm still uh. here, killing this shit till I'm gone. They feeling this shit and they telling themselves, man, this nigga's supposed to be on. And I'm telling myself the same thing. Throw the powder up like King James. I came here for a damn rain. That's King shit. I really mean this. I'm gone. Oh, man. That was beast mode right there, man. We got this. Yeah. That's what I'm 
I'm talking about, my G. That was <laughs> excellent interview. You know what I mean? Now, closing words. Um, what do you want to tell the people? Your last closing words. You know what I mean? What to look for, <clears throat> and you know. I just want to tell the people that you know I'm I'm definitely here for the love of it. Like I want to do so many things when it comes to music. So. Anybody, whether it's a listener that I'm just currently tuned into my music, whether it's a new listener, like, just pay attention. Like, if you want to follow my journey, if you want to go with me on this road that I'm going and listen to some consistent quality music and, and just see me flourish and grow, like, you know, just tune in because I'm definitely a dreamer. I'm passionate about everything that I do. Like, I love hip-hop. I just love the culture, period. Like, outside right. of the music, just the lifestyle, just how it makes you feel, how it can pick your day up, how it can change how you feel about something. Like, it's one of the, it's like a beacon of light for me. So I think when it comes to me and music, it's just, it's it's so powerful, and I feel so deeply about it that I feel like anybody that's following me, that you know, they're going to get that from it. And I'm, I'm only going to give you my best every time, like, a thousand and one percent every single time. So, um, that's it, man. Just look out for me. Pieces of a King coming soon. Uh, too Busy Dreaming out now. You can get that off my band camp, famoushiphop.bandcamp.com. You can get it off that piff. Follow me on my you know, social networks, Famous Hip Hop, F-A-M-E-I-S-H-I-P-H-P. So that's Fame is Hip Hop. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. That's Facebook, famoushiphop.com. YouTube, Famous Hip Hop, all things Famous Hip Hop. And just... Just stay tuned in. Build with me. Reach out to me. I'll follow you back. I'll reach out to you. And you know what I'm saying? As long as you don't post a million and 470 selfies a day, I won't unfollow you. But if you do, I will. Unless you're very attractive, I may Word, let you live. What are you cool. doing? You know what I'm saying? Word, we got to give them the time. Yeah. What are you fact, doing? <laughs> Real talk, man. They need yeah. to chill on that. But, yeah, also, too, fame, man, I need to drop and shut them down radio, fam. Shout out, shut him down, radio. This is Fame. I'm coming live from the DMV, DC, PG, Maryland, to be exact. You know, shout out y'all for letting me come through and, and you know, bless you and do my thing with y'all. Real talk. And also, when your project drop, man, come back through, man. Hit my line. Definitely. Definitely. You know what I mean? Bring that single through, King shit. And you, yeah, and then, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely different. I, I feel like you're going to rock with it. Definitely. And we're going to go out with your track right here. This is Fame, Busy Dreaming, Want It All, produced by Ear to the Beat, man. We out of here, man. Word, yeah. Fame, peace, man. Salute. Peace, man. One. Salute. Dream. I seen a window the other day, said I die through it. Opportunity in the air, I'ma fly to it. Tie my laces up, tired of tripping over my own feet. Women start tripping when they want to be your only. Can you tell them that you ain't got the time? You've been looking for your dreams, it's finally time to find them. I can't be one of them niggas, let that pussy blind him. Type of man where only a woman can define him. Vanilla sky on a dark night. Tom Cruise in that black thing, feeling like the dark night. Pull up on the curb like I can fucking park right. Banging that opportunity door like I can't knock right. A bright future with a dark sight. Put that red on that black, guarantee it's on spot right. Trying to jump start a dying dream. It's hard to trust anything around me when nothing is what it seems. Wake up, do what I really want in life. That's my dream. That's all I really want in life. Living out my dreams or dying in a nightmare. If that's my only option, then just leave me with a blank stick. A broke nigga with a rich mentality. Trying to broker myself to a rich man's salary. Back against the wall, I feel the door and I just walk through it. You got a problem, look it in the eye and talk to it. These niggas, they ain't never really seen problems. I went to sleep, woke up, man, I dream problems. I want it all. I guess that really means problems. The better means strategies for me. Till I can wake up and fly to any place I want Then I ain't in the place I want I guess perception is the inception inside my dreams Inside that safe you gon' find everything I want Oh, that's too much.
much to ask for Cause my ancestors the same color as asphalt They tell me everything I want I'll probably never get So when I get it I'll make sure that they never forget Epic event, promote shit, pictures Black mirrors painted on hell walls and pictures I want it all for everyone who ain't with us The fall for everything, the same one give us They invented the hustle, I'm an innovator I overgrind, play it to the very end Overtime, you should get my love You know I put nothing over mine I would give her everything like not doing it with crime Sweet dreams, wake up to beautiful nightmares Hate the shit I witnessed in my life I'm even quite dead, big God Everything else could bleed red I'm in the position to win, fuck what he said I want it all, money cost clothes and my best trigger voice, that's how the story goes. They tell me if you speak it, you can get it. So let me tell these people what I want and hope they don't forget it.